Hi, I'm Erica with Redeeming Thunder, and I wanted to open up this word today um, with what does utterance of the Holy Spirit mean? This is a supernatural utterance, a known or native tongue. The utterance are divine. The speaking speaker is merely the messenger of the divine message. A speaker delivers an important message from God to a person or persons by divine inspiration. That is under gifts of the Holy Spirit. And today we're going to be talking about um, another commandment that the Lord has given me on 4-2-2023. This is in notebook number two. I'm currently in notebook number seven, so we have a long ways to go. Um, this is important that we understand the definition of utterance. And that is why I mention it because today I share one of the commandments, but... Um, the Holy Spirit gave me this commandment in utterance, in Hebrew, in a holy tongue. So that is stated, ah, sha'al, spelled S-H-U, apostrophe A-L, na-da. Lord, I pray that you will give me the wisdom and knowledge to state what you want me to st say in this moment for these people and that you will open their ears so that they can hear you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Ah means an exclamation, expressed surprise, pity, a complaint, an entreaty, contempt, threatening, delight, triumph, according to the manner of utterance. So, this is kind of a serious topic because we're talking about um, false prophets. Um, so, that's what Sha Shaul Ol Sha Sha Ol. It's kind of hard to say means name of an Israelite and a place in Palestine strong number 7777 or it also means fox or jackal as a borrow borrower and that would be Hebrew number 7776 it references songs 215 take us the foxes the little foxes that spoil the vines for our vines have tender grapes. Why am I stating that it means false prophet? Well, let's listen on on these scriptures that reference that the word fox and we will figure it out together. Um, and solve the mystery of the utterance that the Holy Spirit gave us. Judges 5 or 15, 4. Judges 15, 4. And Sansom went and caught 300 foxes and took fire brand, brands and turned tail to tail and put a fire brand in the midst between the two tails. Sansom's revenge. The chapter began as Sansom returned to visit his wife as at least what he thought was his wife. However, his would-to-be father-in-law would not allow him to see his wife because he's, he'd already given her away to Sansom's friend. So that's what he did. 
Okay, Nehemiah 4, 3. I have part of the verse there, but I wanted to say the whole thing because it makes more sense. 4, 3. Now Tobiah the Ammonite was by him, and he said, Even that which they build, if a fox go up, he shall even break down their stone wall. The next verse is Lamentations. I will break down these verses in just a minute. Lamentations. Five, eighteen. Because of the mountain of Zion, which is desolate, the foxes walk upon it. Now we're going to go to Psalms sixty-three, ten. Those. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. Those who are out to get me are marked for doom, marked for death, bound for hell. Though die violent deaths, jackals will tear them limb from limb. Okay. Ezekiel. Um, Thirteen. 13, 4, okay, so this one says, your prophets, Israel, are like jackals among ruins. You have not gone up to the breaches in the wall to repair it for the people of Israel so that it will stand firm in the battle on the day of the Lord. We have another verse here. Sam first Samuel thirteen seven. Some Hebrews even crossed the Jordan to the land of Gad and Gilead. Saul remained at Gil Gilgal and all the troops with him. Oh sorry. Thirteen 17. No wonder it didn't really make sense. Okay. Raiding parties went out from the Philistine camp in three detachments. One turned toward Oprah in the vicinity of Sha'al. So remember, Sha'al is an exact location or person. It's also known as a uh, relation to um, the characteristics of a fox. First Chronicles. Seven thirty. Thirty seven. Or thirty six, excuse me. The sons of Zopha saw Hepper. Harp, Nepher, Shaal, there's that word, Buri, and Imra. Okay, then, found something interesting from the Torah scholars. There are lions before you, and you ask foxes? Why do you ask the opinions of foxes? That is my opinion, when there are distinguished scholars present. That makes us think. What are they talking about? So, the meaning of a fox in the Bible would be someone that is low, cunning, crafty compared to straightforward dealing. It's a contrast to a lion's characteristics. Foxes are known to be basic, opinionated, non-scholar studies, um... Someone that goes off of their own opinion um, or steals from other prophets. Um, 
instead of receiving direct word from the Lord, they'll just, you know, take from what they've heard from somebody else. All right, third rate person, inferior person, compared to real power and greatness, great men, and they mention true scholars that know the word of the Lord. All right, so little foxes are also known um, as those sins, attitudes, and habits that were more often overlooked, excused, or defended. So people that have characteristics, I guess, of this. James 2.10 Took our sins away, then made grace available to help us live the life he has called us to live. So we're talking about Jesus when he died on the cross, then that was grace was left for us. The Holy Spirit was left for us. Let's not take that for granted. I think that it's trying to say. Um, Titus 2, 2 states something really cool. Two, two. Oh, I mean, twelve. Titus, Titus two, twelve. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self controlled, upright, and godly lives in the, this present age. All right, so we are to keep going. Foxes, so shual in Hebrew, are digging down barrels and burrowing in. So after they do this, the disaster or they eat all the crops, then they burrow down and they go and hide. So metaphorically speaking, They'll say false things. They'll say opinionated comments. Um, they'll say, thus saith the Lord. And then they'll wipe their hands clean. Like if, I don't know how people do that. How they feel peace in their hearts. Um, making up stuff. But there's some consequences for that. All right, so. To dig a little deeper where these foxes come from, um, Cyrenian fox, only species of this animal to be in Palestine, burrows silent and solitary habits, destructive to vineyards, being a plunderer of ripe grapes. So we got here Deuteronomy. Two fifteen. Oops, I spelled Deuteronomy wrong. Okay. The Lord's hand was against them until he had completely eliminate, eliminated them from the camp. This is essential. This next verse talks about what the Lord calls this certain king references a certain king um, a fox so Issachel 13 4 your prophets Israel are like jackals among ruins our Lord calls Herod that fox so when Herod threatens Jesus to be killed, then Jesus comes at him in Luke 13, 32. So we're going to look that up. 13, 32. He replied, go tell that fox, I will keep on 
driving out demons and healing people today and tomorrow. And on the third day, I will reach my goal. So what happened is the Pharisees came to tell Jesus, Hey, Rod, he Rod, I don't know how to say it. He Rod is threatening to have you killed. And so Jesus is like, I don't have time for this drama. And um, he's like a fox. And I'm just going to keep doing God's work here. And I'm going to keep going forward. And on that note, there was a false prophet that went on this um, on this channel recently. And I had to delete because he was saying all kinds of um, blasphemous, false things that were disrespectful to Jesus regarding stating that he was a lesbian and it was going on and on about some other like doing magic or whatever i just didn't even bother reading the rest of it i just deleted it it and um i'm gonna be doing that so whoever wants to act and say dumb stuff um you're gonna be blocked and deleted because we're not gonna i'm not gonna tolerate you confusing the rest of the people here and trying to confuse them but not gonna not gonna um achieve anything so in other words you just gotta shut it down immediately when you hear someone um without any substance or background or any um guidance other than their own opinion like recently i had just been at work and some random person that i was trying to be have courtesy because he looked kind of homeless and he starts bringing up god and jesus i believe in him and this and that and how he is a you know prodigy child and i was trying to be courteous but i was trying to get him out the door because uh, they're not supposed to be in the building anyway um, due to the services that we have at my job. But anyway, um, he then started mixing magic arts and stating a crystal that he was going to make. And he was it was going on and on about different tangents. And then he started getting perverse and it was just going in a cycle. And I just had to shut it down and kick him out of the building um, and be like, and some other coworker noticed that he was just talking blasphemous things that didn't make sense. And, um, that's what I was saying is we need, you need to not tolerate, you already know what you believe in. Don't tolerate, don't mix new age stuff with. God's prophetic word it has nothing to do with the with with each other it's um like native within prophetic word that have to do with stones and um sage or all that kind of stuff don't be doing that because it, it doesn't that is if you're teaching people that you could still do one with the other that is still considered False prophet. False prophets and teachers are for those, are the, for their cunning, their subtle, their flattery, and they are compared to foxes. So it's not a compliment to be compared to as a fox. So just letting you know. Okay, so. Um, songs. Oh. I saved this. Songs of Solomon 2.13 refers to the growing romance between the couple. So let's read that. The fig 
tree ripens its figs and the vines are in blossom they give forth fragrance arise my love my beautiful one and come away all right so of a couple then the fox of verse 15 represents potential problems that could damage the relationship prior to the marriage which takes place in chapter 5 the command in essence is take preventative measures to protect their this love from anything that could harm it so Luke 13 30 through 34 make sure that when you are receiving prophetic word that it's always backed up with the word the word of the lord it's that's someone that did their homework and even though it's prophetic word and it's talking about the future the bible has everything that would substantiate and confirm the future so and behold there are last which shall be first and there are first which shall be last and the same day there came certain of the pharisees saying unto him get thee out and depart hence for herod will kill thee and he said unto them go ye and tell that fox behold i cast out devils and i do cure cures today and tomorrow and the third day i shall be perfected nevertheless i must walk today and tomorrow and the day following for it cannot be that a prophet perish out of jerusalem O jerusalem jerusalem which killeth the prophets and stoneth them that are sent unto thee how often would i have gathered thy children together as a hen doeth gather her broad the brood under her wings and ye would not behold your house is left under your you desolate and verily i say unto you you shall not see me until the time come when ye shall say blessed is he that cometh in the name of the lord fox can be oh then i put into reference hebrews 20 to all of these you can find in the strong number that I gave but I will list all of the verses in this video as well so you can look it up so Hebrews 2 10 for it came it became him for whom are are all things and by whom are all things and bringing many sons unto glory to make the ca captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. So some of these you have to read the commentary. And some I will on certain verses. Um, not every single one because it will be then. I'm trying not to make the video so long. Um, but I do encourage that you read the commentary as well. These are um, verses that are. Um, attached to the strong number to the to the actual word given okay so fox can be of moral con connotations Mishnah demonstrates be a tail to lions rather than a head to foxes it is better to be someone of low rank among those who are morally and spiritually your superiors than someone of high rank among scoundrels. Foxes, son of foxes, means worthless degenerate rulers who are the descendants of worthless degenerate rulers. Okay? Comes from Isaiah 3, 1 through 7. Isaiah, Isaiah 3, 
1 through 7. For behold, the Lord, the Lord of hosts, doeth take away from Jerusalem and from Judah the, the stay and the staff, the whole stay of bread and the whole stay of water, the mighty man and the man of war, the judge and the prophet and the prudent and the ancient, the captain of fifty and the honorable man and the counselor and the cunning artificer and the eloquent orator and i will give children to be their princes and babes shall rule over them and the people shall be oppressed every one by another every one by his neighbor the child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient and the base against the honorable when a man shall take hold of his brother of the house of his father saying thou hast clothing be thou our ruler and let this ruin be under thy hand and that day shall be swear, saying, I will not be an healer, for in my house is neither bread nor clothing. Make me not a ruler of the people. Okay, and an and our infants shall rule over them. Referencing that Babylonian Talmud, the infants means foxes, son of foxes. Non-moral value rule linked to king reign although horrid degenerate rulers no substance fox defined as weakling small fry poser clown insignificant person cream puff a nobody a weasel a, a jackass pompous pompous pretender jerk jesus was direct so he would reprimand and that's what we that's how we need to be when we hear certain people um giving just opinions and